Welcome back to the Redneck Racing Channel, guys. Uh, today we're doing the rear end in Adam's car. He's got, what is it, 373s you're putting in the car? Yep. So what were they before? Two, uh, 323s. 323s? We're going up a half a point. All right, so we're doing half a point. Um, he's got most of his stuff from Motive Gear. So he's got a whole bunch of stuff here. It was just Christmas, so... That's what he got for Christmas, I guess. So we're doing that today. Uh, we'll take you guys along for the ride. It is currently like six degrees outside, so good thing we got a heated shop. <laughs> that face, I got that face too. Nice. <laughs> oh yeah. So we're gonna get started on here, and uh, once something starts happening we'll be right back we'll be back then all right guys so we got the car up in the air we went and tested on it it seems to be solid that's not the sound of that jack stand rocking back there it's fine so we're gonna today i think we're just gonna be taking stuff apart and then we got to look at the uh, pinion bearings, which I don't have yet because I don't know exactly what size I need. <clears throat> so we're going to... There's the new one. 373 right there. But we got to look at a bunch of different... Wow, they really made this dirty. This isn't rust. This is like earwax or something on here. I don't know what that is. But yeah, we got a... There's our pinion depth right there. 2.292. So, that's the one thing that I'm not looking forward to. Because from what I've heard, it's a pain in the butt. There's somewhere in that ring gear that says 147. Yeah, right here, 147. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure the number on the top of the pinion matches on the ring gear. It does. That means these have been lapped. And then that is the proper pinion depth. So we're going to have to do some sort of fancy pant, something with bearings because we don't have a press. The ones that are in there right now, the one that goes right here, we should just be able to tap out and then because that one is a uh, more of a loose fit it's just there and then there's the head bearing which is press fit onto the shaft and I don't think we're gonna get the old head bearing off at least not in one piece actually I know we're not gonna get it off in one piece <laughs> we probably won't even try a angle grinder. <clears throat> we should probably just leave it right on the pinion that way we can sell yeah. it to some other idiot who doesn't know what he's doing um, and then what I think we're going to do is get one extra head bearing and waller it out and use it as a fitment bearing to check the pinion depth and get the proper shimming. Because the way you're supposed to shim the GM stuff is you put the shim in here between here and the bearing. So then you, the more shims you do, the more it moves the pinion into the ring gear. And so we want to make sure that that measurement is whatever this is right here, 2.292. So whatever shim is already in there, we're just going to put that right on here. And it should be close. It should be very close. If not, you have a box of shims. If not, we got a box of shims. And we can adjust that. And hopefully we, only, we should only have to do this once. Because um, my uncle gave me a depth gauge, so we don't actually have to trial and error it a million times with the, by just checking the wear pattern. We do have a depth gauge. So we should just be able to set it up once, measure it, figure out what the deficit is, put in that amount of shims or subtract that amount of shims, and then it should be fine. So hopefully that won't be too big of a pain in the butt, because we have, for once, the right tools to do it. But it's still going to find some way to be a pain in the butt, so I guess we'll deal with it. Deal the deal. 
And then for the ring gear, um, that one won't be as big of a pain in the butt for setting the backlash and the, the side to side. That's backlash, same thing. Um, and then the wear pattern. So, But that'll probably come at a later date once we get some bearings for this. So. <laughs> You were to upload it. Alright, nice. right, so we got all the bolts out and diff covers coming off. But we put a bajillion pounds of goop on there, so chances of it actually coming off are about zero. Alright, persuader time already. <laughs> Wanna so start with the big one or the orange one? <laughs> I brought an assortment because I figure we'll end up with the green one anyways, so. You're supposed to do it right here on these corners. Probably. So that's what they're for. That little. I'm not doing a very good job of recording right now because I'm laying weird. There we go. That's better. Yeah, you won't need that just yet. And it's starting to drip. And this is why it's Adam's job. Uh. <laughs> Got him. I'm having a good time. I don't know about you. <laughs> oh. A nice big sploosh down there. Yep. Wow, oh, yeah, look at that. I'm making a mess. It doesn't look terrible. I guess we didn't put it together that wrong. Not a bunch of metal chunks in it that I can see. It's going to heave on or something. I almost dropped the camera. You just heave on it, yeah. It'll go. There you go. I guess we're gonna get, uh, we gotta take this one middle bar out. You got the three bars. Three off. We have to take this one and this one now. Oh, really? Yeah. This one was the pain last time, but I used a torch and broke it open last time, so it should be fine now. I did not bring the breaker bar, though. So. Oh, well. Might just need a pipe. Yeah, we can put a pipe on the other wrench, yeah. This one and this one. This one's, this one's got three screws over there. This one has one bolt with a bushing. And then they both just pivot from right there, but you don't gotta worry about that. Just pivot them down. They clear this bar barely. And you can just swing them down over into here. And then when you pop the carrier out, it can just come up and over. Alright, guys, we got the carrier, or we got the, the C clips out and the axles pulled out a little bit. We found out that you gotta take. Or at least for this car, you gotta take the tires and brake pads, or uh, brake drums off to push the axles in enough for the C-clips to fall out. So if you're having a problem doing that and you got the tires on, could be the problem. But we got the C-clips out, both of them. And uh, we're, we got everything laid out here, how it came out of the car. And so now we're going to try and fight with this carrier to get him out, which is probably going to not be very much fun, but because these normally take a while to get out because they're so tight. But uh, we'll give her our best shot. We're probably not going to record us pulling it out because we've already done that once. If you want to see us putting that in that rear end, that's a 
Posi out of a 4th gen 2002 Camaro. So if you want to see all the finagling and fiascoing we had to do to get that thing to work, uh, go check out one of our other videos installing 4th gen Posi and 3rd gen Camaro. But we're going to pull this thing out right here, right now, and we'll be back when we get that all done. Alright, so we're taking the pinion out now. I'm holding this crook to the pack. Alright, there we go. So we just, uh, we're tapping it out with yep. a rubber mallet. And to give yourself a bigger thing to hit, the nut that you take off the end of the pinion, put her back on a ways, like a good ways, until it starts getting tight again. Then you can bang on the nut. It doesn't really matter in this case, because we're not reusing this pinion, but if you were trying to reuse the pinion, that way you don't go and smash up all the threads on the end of this. But if you have a rubber hammer or you put the nut back on the end of it, it'll be fine. I got the four leverage on this. Just don't send that thing flying into my teeth. That's all I ask. I'm sure there's not a pin or something? There, is, there should be. I mean, it's kind of press fitted. Want a bigger around. hammer? Huh? Want a bigger hammer? Yeah, give me a bigger hammer. Where's a bigger hammer? Where's the three pound that I had? Uh, it should be right behind your head. Maybe this guy will do it. I don't think so. Yeah. Yep, definitely. Let's not do that. Where'd it go? Oh, uh, oh wait, I found it. That's not it. <laughs> that might work. This is the I'm not asking. There it is. Alright guys, so as you can see, we got the pinion out of the diff. So, the next step is going to be to tap out the... We got to take that bearing out back in there and tap out the two races. There's this race right here, which... There's a little, I can feel there's a groove right here and a groove right here. we got to go in on the other side and tap them out. And then you can see the two divots on this side and on that side are the two little ears. So we just got a, a homemade punch or a drift or whatever you want to call this thing right here. And I'm just going to, I might need to make it a little better. I don't know. But... I'm just going to take that in there and pound on it a little bit and uh, hopefully the uh, the bearing in there and the other race, both the races will come right out and then we got to measure them and see what size they are so that we can go and purchase the correct size. So I'm going to smack them out real quick and then we'll go and look at uh, measuring stuff. So we got all the stuff out, basically. So here's the, uh, there's the bearing that, the, or the tail bearing. Here's the race for the head bearing. The head bearing is still on there. We're going to try and get it out in one piece right now, but... And try a screwdriver. Yeah. You know why do a screwdriver between the two sides? It might Maybe. Oh. We're going to try and rescue this so we can use it as a setup bearing to check pinion depth. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to spend 20 bucks and get a new one. But um, our job was made really easy for getting the new bearings because all the part numbers is just right on here, which is awesome. Which makes me think that these were probably replaced at some point in this car because I think stock they'd be AC Delco. But these are all Timken bearings, so I just punched all these part numbers like the M86610 for the race. Punch that right into the summit. Punch this here. M86649 for the bearing. Here's the part number for this race. Just punched all that stuff right into the summit. Came right out. So now we're going to try and put this into the vise somehow and pound on it some way somehow to get the bearing off of here try and use it as a setup oh, so not gonna work out very well for me, is it? 
We're gonna we'll be back when this comes off or when oh, we give up. Yeah. All right, guys. So we got the uh, the old bearings and whatnot coming in. So Peter right now is torquing the new ring gear onto the carrier, the old uh, the Zexa Posit traction. There's the old ring gear from the 323s. There's the one for the 373s. So. We got a whole bunch of bearings. Uh, here's this is the one earlier today. I went to another friend's house to uh, Jake and Connor's place, and we augged out the inside of this bearing with a die grinder a little bit so it'll slip over top of the pinion nicely. And we're going to use this as a setup bearing, so that's what that one's for. And then in here, we got that's some other stuff. For another video so we got all the races and bearings we need there's for the tail bearing and race and then we have head bearing and race plus a set of bearing next step is to pound the races into the diff carrier underneath there and then we can start mocking it up with that bearing figure out our pinion depth we got a depth gauge from my uncle right here we'll be using that and then we got a box of shims and gaskets and whatever right here. So there, there's our all of our setup stuff, minus the pinion and the carrier. We got all the shims, plus an extra pinion nut, which we may as well use this versus the old crusty one, which I also may have completely smashed with a hammer getting the pinion out. We got a new crush sleeve, which... We better not screw that up. If not, I think they're five bucks at O'Reilly's. We have some new... Oh yeah, we could have used these yeah, on that oops. instead. Whatever. Yep. And then this is a new seal. So, Alright, we're going to figure out if we were supposed to reuse those or not. And then uh, we'll be back when we start putting stuff into the car. Alright everybody, we got the ring gear put back on the carrier. And now we're working on our... More accurately, Peter's working on putting the races in. So I think we just got in, I believe what's called the tail race, whatever one is on this side. So now we got the bigger of the two, which is this one. And we're going to send him in. I think I might use the other one. <coughs> Either one of these will work probably. So yeah, we rented this, one of these fancy pants tools from O'Reilly's. So if you, any of you guys are doing this, um, O'Reilly's just rents this stuff for free. You have to pay them for it when you take it out of their store, but they give you your money back when you bring it back. So it's definitely worth it, I think. Yeah, this could use, really used to be longer, especially for the one I'm about to do. Yeah, probably. Figures. Yeah. It does. We might have to invent that our own rod. Well, we got that one big... Wait a minute. I mean, somebody's going to have to hold the rod for you to hit. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's not going to be my fingers. Alright, so what we're doing here is we are measuring pinion shims to figure out what the thicknesses are on these so that we can set the correct pinion depth. This one... We're just using a, a calipers here. This one here, eleven thousandths. Well, twelve thousandths. And then I'm just taking a, a sharpie and writing on them so we don't have to keep measuring them. Oh, like oh, one, two, like that. So that one's fifteen. The next one's twenty. That one's twelve. We got two more. This one here looks like eight. So what were you sending that thirty for a start? Uh, yeah. So that should get us in the ballpark of where we should be. And then from there, we're gonna use that depth gauge that my uncle gave me. 
and then we can, well, I can't see anything. And then we can use that to set a pinion depth. And from there, we'll, we'll start with the 30 thousandths shim underneath the bearing. We have the setup bearing here. So this is what I was talking about with the setup bearing. It's right there in the bucket. So we ogged it out. So now it just slides on here. Usually that just is like a, that. usually it's a press fit. Right. So. And then this is, we're going to use this one as a setup bearing for the tail bearing. This is the old bearing out of the car, but it's the same Timken bearing that we have right here. So we're allowed to use that. That's backwards though. It is backwards. It goes like that. Yes. And this goes on first. Now it's done. Nice. This goes on first. We're using, going to use the old crush sleeve so that we don't wreck our new one. Put that in the diff like this. Then once it's in, we put that on. And then we put the yoke on. And then we put this on after the yoke. And tighten it down with that. And we crank it down basically as tight as we can. We'll measure our pinion depth. And the pinion depth is written on the front of the pinion right here, 2.292 plus or minus two thousands. So that's what we're shooting for. I'm shooting for like plus or minus four thousands because we'll see how good we get. So once we take our measurement the first time with the 30 thousands shim, however far off we are, we can figure out how many more of these we need to add or subtract. So we should only have to do this twice. But we also suck at doing stuff right the first time. So Granted, it is 2021 now, so maybe yeah. our luck has changed. Yeah, we're no longer... <laughs> the curse of 2020 is over. Maybe. maybe. We'll see how it goes. We'll be the first people to test it. <laughs> <laughs> see if the curse is still here. The ball dropped, like, literally 15 minutes ago, so... All right, everybody. We got the setup thing in here. So... Wow, this nut took a little bit of a beating going in, and I hope it'll come back out. But, uh, because we probably, this nut is probably on here at, I don't know, what would you say? Probably like 250 foot-pounds or something it's stupid. Like that. Yeah, we have this bar we had, pipe wrench. We had that pipe on there, and the jack handle on that thing, and I was heaving up on it as hard as I possibly could. So... Uh, basically, when you do the setup, you just want to make it so that there's no play back and forth in this. And as you can see, we got it. There's there's no play back and forth in here anymore. And so now what we got to do is we just got to measure how far that pinion is from the center line of the axles. So that is what we are going to be doing right now. We have 28 in there. So we have... Yeah, so here, here's what we got, guys. This was, we measured this, or well, it was, we had, oh boy, that's too much. This came out to 23 thousandths exactly when we measured pinion depth with this bad boy. And I just kind of, actually, we should probably go measure it again, because I just put this flat edge on one of the uh, lands for where the cap sits. But this edge wasn't supported at all, so it could have been, it wasn't very stable. And then I pushed this in with my tongue. So we should probably both go down there and do this. Yeah, but that doesn't sound like a it, very accurate measurement. I don't know, it felt pretty accurate to me. <laughs> to my tongue, it my felt tongue really accurate. My tongue is very accurate. Anyways, we're pretty sure it's 23 thousandths exactly. I believe is what that means, because... That right there is right at the three, and that right there is the zero. So, um, all right, yeah, it would be 2.3 exactly, and we're supposed to have 2.292, which means we need to be closer to that's too much. We need to be closer to right. Holy cow, I can't do this. It needs to move in a little bit, which means we need to add more shims onto it. We have 28 on there right now. We need to add 8, which is 36,000. Yeah. Which means we need a total 28 
plus 8 is 36. So we need a total of 36 thousandths. So we have a 20 shim. We have a 15 shim. That'll give us yeah, 35 thousandths. Probably the closest we're going to get. I think that is the closest we're going to get. Because we already used our 8. Unless we do... Unless we into... What is... That's 24. Both of those together is 24. Plus 8. It's 30. It's 32. We need 36, right? Yeah, we don't have a 4,000th yeah. shim. So I'm pretty sure what we're going to do is we're going to take the 8,000th out and replace it with that 15,000th. And that should get us... Right about there. That should get us exactly what we need. But we should go and measure that one more time because yeah. my measurement method was... We'll do that again, yeah. So that's our game plan, anyways. We'll be back when that happens or it doesn't. All right. Oh, jeez. Another blooper. <laughs> <laughs> we're having trouble today, guys. All right. Um, we're back here today with more precise measuring um, apparatuses, such as this piece of steel. Um, and we're going for round two on the old measuration here, and, uh, so far from what we've got, the news is good. So we're just holding that bar across there, we got this depth gauge from my uncle. This should come out to be 2.470 on the nuts. I might have bumped it a little bit, but and that's a little bit less, which is even better. That's what I, we've been getting 2.270, like, yeah, or sense. just slightly less, 2. 2.470. That's what I got when I did this, when I measured it, that's what Peter got when he did it, when he measured it, so that's a good sign that we both got the same thing. Scrape that on the yeah, edge. That's closer to what it should have been. I'll measure it again. That's a little bit less than the seven. The thickness of this steel is 0 0.173, 173 thou. So we take this number and subtract it. So we got that math right here. This will be the most accurate measurement I've taken. And so that gives okay, us... Okay, what the heck? So anyways, we got that right there, which is 2.296. The measurement we're looking for is 2.292, which means we're four thousandths off of factory specifications. Which the factory... Is not that bad. The factory says to be within plus or minus two thousandths. I told myself I would be happy if it was plus or minus five thousandths. And some of the measurements we're getting are slightly smaller. So if we averaged everything we would be within spec. Seven. Just a little less. Yeah. It's like 69. So that puts us within... That's three thousandths. That's one thousandth off of spec. Yeah, we're hitting... Three thousandths off, four thousandths off, one thousandth off. I mean, we're I mean, if we yeah. average if we average our error, we are we're exactly two thousandths off. Yeah. All right, guys, we got the new pinion out, and uh, we uh, we determined, or well, I called my uncle, and with the help of my uncle, we determined what we're going to do is we're going to take. We've got two shims on here, a twenty and an eight. So. There's our 8. He's going to go away. We're going to put the 20 back on. And we're going to put a 12 on instead of the 8. So our problem is right now, we're plus 3 thousandths, which means the pinion, if you're looking at the car like this, the pinion is too far this way. We need to bring it that way a little bit by 3 thousandths. Well, we can't do that, but we can take out an 8 thousandths and add a 12 thousandths which will put it four thousandths that way, which will mean it's only technically one thousandth off. So I'm going to go and find the twelve thousandths. And actually, these are like eleven and a half thousandths, which should make it almost perfect. And actually, I think one of these is thinner. If one of these is actually an eleven thousandths, it'll be exactly completely where it needs to be. 
So I'm going to remeasure both of these because I think one of them was like 11 or 11 and a half. And we're going to put whatever one is a little bit smaller on here. And then I talked to my uncle and he said it should be fine since we had this mocked up in there almost exactly how it's going to be. The only thing we did differently is we used a mock-up bearing, which is the exact same Timken brand bearing as the one I'm going to put in here. <clears throat> They're both brand new. This one I just augged the middle out. And we used the old bearing that was in the car before we took everything apart, which is this one right here. So it was mocked up almost completely the way it was supposed to be. We even used we used the old crush sleeve. So we're just gonna we're gonna adjust as necessary and put it back together and then just really, really, really hope it's good. Alright guys, we got the bearing or the, the good bearing on the pinion. So what we did for this is we put the bearing in the oven at 200 degrees and we put the pinion in the freezer at zero degrees. I went on to, these are Timken bearings, so I went on to the Timken, their web page, and they had a PDF that I downloaded on there that gave the specifications for heating and cooling bearings for shrink fitting and press fitting using temperature differences. And it said, uh, most bearings can be fit on with a temper different, temperature difference of 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it also said the maximum temperature you're supposed to heat these bearings up, these taper comb bearings, is 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So with the pinion at zero and this at 200, that is 50 degrees more than they recommend for, or that's 50 degrees more than it has to be for the press fit and 50 degrees less than the maximum temperature for this. And it seriously worked perfectly. We just took this out of the oven. We left it in there for a half an hour. We put this in the freezer for probably close to two hours. And it just fell right on. It didn't even give us any trouble at all. So that worked out way better than I thought it was going to. And the next thing we're going to do is throw that in the car. We'll lube up this here bearing right here. We'll get the other one, this guy right here, grease him up, or just, or not grease, just some of that stuff. Throw these in the car. Uh, we got to get the new crush sleeve, which is in here. Yep, here's the new crush sleeve. That goes on next. And then this goes into the diff housing like that. That bearing goes on afterwards. And then you put in the seal and put the yoke over top of it. And we went and got an extremely overpriced socket. This bad boy was like $19. And we used that to go and sip that massive nut down. So we're going to get right to doing that. Alright guys, we went ahead and we measured our backlash already. And with the stock um things wow shims with the stock shims we had 16 thousandths of backlash we found the difference between the shims to be 16 thousandths of an inch we flip flopped the shims around moved one to the other side to try and get the backlash a little bit less then we had zero backlash so now what we've gone ahead and done is from the way we flip flopped it with zero backlash we have added five thousandths to the passenger side, and we have taken five thousandths out of the driver's side, which should put us roughly in where we think we need to be, plus or minus a little bit. It's supposed to be right around, it's supposed to be between seven and nine thousandths. Some places say as much as ten thousandths. I don't know. We'll see where this puts us. And then. Uh, we'll get back to you guys. Alright guys, so I am going to show you the wear pattern because I'm proud of myself for doing it right. There it is. We did it. And it looks good. I did it in two spots. There's one right there. Well, there's like hairbrush fur on this. There's the other one. There's the, what the other side looks like. There's a nice one right there. Real nice in the middle. So 
same with over here. Those look really good. It's it's a little bit out this way, but it's it's not hanging over the edge. So I'm happy with it. Alright guys, that's going to be the end of the diff video, changing the gear ratios. Just doing a little update here at the end of the video. It's been about a month since we put this in. So I'm just going to let you guys know how it went. One of the things I was worried about changing gear ratios, and I feel like a lot of people are worried about, is how bad does it affect your gas mileage? And for me, it actually wound up going up. I went from 15 miles a gallon to 17 miles per gallon. So, not exactly sure what happened there. Might have been what we did in the engine when we took that apart and redid everything in there and fixed the valve sum seals. Or it could just be that now it sits at a better RPM range. It used to be um, about 1500 RPM at 60 miles an hour. Now it's closer to 2000, which is where the bottom of the cam's operating range is. So just check that out when you're swapping diffs where your engine wants to be happy. And it turns out mine is actually happier with a higher gear ratio. Other than that, we have not been to the drag strip yet with it, so stay tuned for that. The track opens next weekend, and we'll be going there to see how well it performs acceleration-wise and actually get some evidence on that. It definitely feels faster. It'll spin the tires rolling in first gear now way easier than it did before, sometimes even in second. But that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Make sure to stay tuned. Subscribe to our channel. We're going to be going to the track next weekend. That video will come out later, eventually. Um, but make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for some of the awesome stuff and racing that we're going to do this summer.